This is a big rich town. This is where it goes down. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva. It is season four, episode one. When I get out, Power on Stars is back and they did not disappoint. When we last left off at the end of season three, Angela Valdez was in her feelings. She, I guess she must have felt some type of way for Greg Knox because she done arrested her beloved Jamie. Child goes down there to the uh, check-in at the federal uh, detention center, just looking so sad and pitiful. I was reminded of uh, Neo's song, What Have I Done? Okay, in the end, a monster, but a goddess when we first begun. Mm -hmm. What have I done? That's right. That's what Ghost was thinking. What had he done? And, you know, I listened to Courtney Kemp at the end of the uh, video talk about how you see as he's taking off each piece of jewelry or, or his possessions, he realizes everything that people warned him about to get him to this point came true. See, that's why you don't go back to the past sometimes. Ghost, I learned that the hard way recently. Just, just don't go back. Keep going forward because sometimes your past gets you in trouble. Just leave those relationships. There's a reason why Angela didn't stay in your life before you graduated from high school, okay? Tommy warned you. Tasha warned you. Everybody told you Angela was no good. And now she a warm of scorn. And now you looking at the death penalty possibly or life. I don't know. Do the fans still have the death penalty? I don't know. To me personally, it's cruel and unusual. But then again, the people who murder do cruel and unusual things. But he's he's in there. And guess who shows up on the scene? Rest his soul. At the detention center as a U.S. Marshal. Working in the detention center. Charlie Murphy. All right. It was so good to see him. But Charlie at that time just didn't look healthy at all. Um, bless his heart and rest his soul. But it's good to see that he got some work in before um, he passed on back in April. And Charlie is on which call his ass like no other. Like, you don't kill the cop. So I'm just like, aren't people innocent until proven guilty? Right? Like... The evidence, yeah, does show that he was there, but the evidence doesn't prove that he murdered Greg Knox. By the way, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to this channel, thumbs up this video. Uh, I would appreciate that. In addition uh, to this season starting out, Ghost had some wins last season. Milan gone. They back him and Tommy back to being best of friends. Distribution back on, but now he locked up. For being in love with a woman that's now scorned. And she just serving him the straight cold shoulder. And then her partner or whoever the dude was part of the arrest. He was like, ah, I'll take care of him. And Sandoval, as you know, is the actual murderer of Greg Knox. Because Greg figured out that it was him. I think that had murdered him. So he killed him in cold blood. So when Sandoval finds out that James St. Patrick, a.k.a. Ghost, has been arrested for Greg Knox. He seems to feel some relief. But not really. And I'm beginning to wonder in this season already as we go through this episode, will Sandoval, number one, confess? Leave a signed written confession that he is in fact the one that killed Greg Knox and then kill himself. I mean, because I, I don't see any other way out for him other than to commit suicide. We know your connection to Lobos. We know you murdered Greg Knox. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time before... All of this comes together. We know Ghost didn't kill him. He just went in there looking for some evidence and found Greg dead to the concrete, okay? In addition, I think Sandoval will kill the other DA that's on, on the case, too. I don't know if y'all see that, but I don't see it for the Asian dude that then came in and bogarted the case. I knew there was something I was forgetting to add in my thoughts, but that's just my two cents on it. I think Sandoval, you know, he get desperate. He killed everybody. Look what he did, Greg. And he just lucky that Ghost dumb behind showed up. So now Ghost possibly could take the fall for him, but I doubt it. We also learned in this episode that Keisha, a.k.a. Lala Anthony, is still alive. And I had a feeling she was still alive because, honestly, 
Tommy loves ghosts, but he really loves Tasha. And I don't think he would ever do anything to harm her best friend. As a matter of fact, it turns out he saved her life. She had him in hiding. But Keisha is still upset because she realizes y'all been running dope through my damn salon. And y'all got me all twisted up in here. Ghost ass locked up. It's just a matter of time before they start going down the damn food chain. I ain't going no goddamn where. And I was like, Keisha, girl, calm down. You know Tasha was just doing what she had to do. And you know Tasha being your girl but yeah it was foul but the reason why like so many other people when they're committing uh, crimes that end up where anybody can be implicated at the very least when they ask you the question you can truthfully answer I didn't know now the evidence may show otherwise but you sincerely didn't know they were running drugs and washing money through your salon you thought y'all were just selling bundles Dre ass about to get busted because when the season ended, Tasha got a text message from Kanan and Jukebox now talking about Tariq badass being kidnapped. I can't stand Tariq. I really can't. He getting on my nerves. How are you going to allow some man you just known for five minutes coming between you and your daddy? That don't make any sense, Tariq. But that's okay. You're going to find out the hard way that Slim, a.k.a. Kanan, is not your friend. But Tommy finds out that Tariq has been kidnapped, so he goes to Drake. He was, I mean, to Drake. And he's like, I know you know something. And Dre, for some reason, I really, really thought that Dre was going to come clean with Tommy and tell him who Slim really is. But he never does. Which, to me, is an omen of you going to make Tommy the harbinger of your fate. I mean, you going to die, Dre. So he goes and confronts Kanan and Jukebox Nam and Jukebox being all hard and stuff. And she's just like, well, um, this is even better than what we thought. He done got arrested too? Oh, we really going to stick it to him now. This is really kicking and ways down. But I think that uh, Kanan has a sense of clarity, unlike his cousin. Uh, Dre tells him he can fit them in for $10,000 each. Jukebox says she wants fifteen. dollars they say they're going to let the kid go, so Tariq ends up going home. He delivers Tariq to Tommy. Tommy got questions. Dre don't give no straight answers. And I'm like, even in acting, hell, I didn't believe you damn lie. And you show the hell no Tommy ain't going to believe you damn lie, Dre. So you might as well confess and come clean. Tasha just about to lose it because, you know, her kid's missing, her husband locked up. This is the father of their child. When they confront Tariq about what's been going on, Kanan has already given him like a dialogue. He claims he was at this basketball city place. He got drunk. The kids took a picture, thought it would be funny to send to his mom and ask for random ransom. Thought it would be funny to ask for ransom. They inquire about whose arm is that around you? And he says that, uh, oh, that's my friend's uncle. Tariq is lying his ass off, but little boy, you in a grown man's world, you're going to end up dead or injured, okay? And your sister Raina knows something ain't right, so it's just a matter of time before she confronts you and figures it out. Uh, she also finds out that they tell both children that your dad has been locked up and imprisoned. This is devastating for them. We learn a little bit more about Joseph Proctor, a.k.a. Joey, a.k.a. Turtle. He is one of the best damn criminal defense attorneys in town that money can buy. And Ghost has to call on him. And while Ghost is calling him to let him know that he's been locked up, we find out a little bit more about his story. His wife is freaking dysfunctional. She out on coke. They got a child together. This nice, luxurious apartment looks like total disarray. She telling him, I'm going to tell everybody, you the one that got me on coke. Uh, and then that's when he finds out that Ghost is locked up. He tells him, don't talk to anybody. And that's true. That's just that's just one on one. I don't know why. When you in the desperate situations, you feel the need to confess to other criminals. Don't do it. Just don't do it. OK, just keep your mouth closed. But I think Ghost knows that. And the funny part about it is James has never been arrested. He doesn't even have a criminal record. He's been he's managed to stay clean doing the type of dirt that he does all these years. So how are you going to go from being clean to murdering somebody? That don't even add up. But now we know Joseph Proctor, he is a product of dysfunction or functions in the dysfunction that is his ex-wife. So, uh, but yet he manages to do his damn job. At the end of the day, we know that Ghost made a fatal mistake. Instead of wiping your hand prints off, you took them gloves off at Greg Knox's apartment. And you ended up 
leaving your print. So that's how they got you. A turtle tells him or Joey tells him, you know, I'm going to get you out of this, but you need to tell me everything I need to know. Uh, he also it was the one to inform Tasha, you know, that she needs to get as much money as she can, clean money, $2 million, because these are the feds. They will be watching. Tasha does everything she can to find the money. That's when Tasha goes into, okay, I got to do what I got to do, get my children's father out of out of jail and out of this mess he's created by inviting this cancer into our house known as Angela Valdez. That's Valdez with an S, not a Z. I've been saying Valdez and I know better since last season, but I mean, I'm still pronouncing it right though. Now, if y'all remember some seasons back when we first got introduced to this series, when we first got introduced to this series, remember, Dre always kept a substantial amount of cash in a vault in case he ever needed to leave or get out of jail for whatever reason. And Tasha goes to their investment bank or their bank. Uh, she's trying to get this money together because, you know, it has to be clean money. God damn it, Ghost and sold off all the stock. I don't remember why. I think it was to raise money uh, for the clubs. I think that's what it was, but I can't remember. She gets to the safety deposit box opens it there's a note that says sorry i'm gonna put it back i was like really ghost you sorry you gonna put it back okay now to add insult to injury keisha finally relents when tommy tells her take her behind home you're safe now get over it yeah we were washing drugs through your damn shop she goes and confronts tasha and tasha apologizes but at the end of the day that's her girl that's her sister that's her ride or die because Keisha easily forgives and she's like, we got to get through this. You don't think he really killed anybody? She's like, no, ghost ain't killed nobody. But then get help. We don't know anymore where this goes. Next thing you know, federal uh, investigators, the FBI comes in serving a search warrant. And Tasha's like overwhelmed. Keisha's overwhelmed. And they're like, Angela Valdez is on this. And Keisha's like, I'll kick her ass. I was like, see, that's a friend right there. But girl, we don't want you to go to jail. You got a son to think about. We don't want you to kick nobody's ass, okay? So she's serving this uh, search warrant. And Angela walking in. I just want to smack her smug ass in the head. And then she goes into the office where James had been. And she was like, oh, so this is where he slept in my mind. I'm like, Heffa, what the hell you care where he's sleeping at now? He ain't sleeping with you. He got three hots and a cop now, thanks to your dumb ass. I'm just like, oh, really? You know what? You cannot allow personal feelings to affect the way you do your job. Not to mention, check how Angela Valdez was looking at the house like, like, it was her first time at Disneyland. Like, she just can't believe that Ghost was living like this. Girl, he was trying to have you live like that too, but you done screwed that up with your with your self-righteousness. And in the end, I think your career is over. Then Raina rolled up on Angela. That was my favorite part of the show. I mean, there were lots of things I loved about this episode, but this was my favorite part. Because I'm like, in your selfishness, in your blindness, making it about you, Laura Raina, Ghost's daughter, rolled up on his phone. I thought you said you wanted us to be a family. You lied. She was like, but I did, baby. And then, she, and then that's when you can see that Angela has this thought, like, what the fuck did I do? I fucked up. I got to figure out how to get him out of here. And I think that she really is going to get him out of here or, or out of that situation some kind of way. I have a feeling, even though uh, later in the episode, she thinks that she's going to sit second chair or first chair. I was like, first of all, what kind of sense does that make? You done slept with the defendant and the damn victim. So I don't know anywhere in, in the practice of law where that would even be a... Hell, do you know what the code of conduct is? I don't... If I remember correctly about uh, professional responsibility, you can't do that. And they know you can't do that. So either way, uh, Angela, I hope you sleep well at night now that you know you just destroyed this man's family because you were selfish and in your feelings because you were butt hurt. Girl, bye. So Tasha is at a crossroads. She's like, how the hell do I come up with this money? She finds the necklace, this very expensive necklace that she puts two and two together 
that ghost bought for Angela. I think it was last season. And of course, she gave it back to him when their relationship ended. When she goes to see him, she asked about it. She said, should I hawk it? In my mind, I was thinking, honestly, at this point, to get legitimate money, I think Tasha should sell whatever they have that's worth anything. She even tried to crack the children's trust. And I'm like, first of all, if they are irrevocable and they are not grantor defective, you gonna have to go to court and get that modified because you can have the right to substitute property put in there uh, when you do write out an irrevocable trust that you are setting up for your future generations or your children because usually people have what they call accumulating pot trust which is where it doesn't split until there's some event usually the death of whomever the first grantor is or both grantors whomever sets up the trust so that's why I was like girl good luck with that but you ain't gonna be able to get that money so talking to ghosts, he's my way, you're not going to get that much money for it. I was like, hell, who cares? At this point, we need to raise as much as we can. Get your ass out of, out of prison. And so when she went to see him, he said, we can get the money from Dean. Dean still owes us money. And at first, I forgot who Dean was. I realized Milan was Dean. Dean is Milan. And he was operating a legit security firm. She out getting high with Tommy. They cracked the code. Tommy goes to his connects and people and he gets and they get the money. Unfortunately, getting the money ain't gonna really help the situation because uh, that new prosecutor that they got, uh, the one who was talking to this mob boss, and I'm like, what connection does the mob boss have to Ghost Case? I'm trying to figure that out. I think there's gonna be a connection because you saw. When they did the head count, he was walking by looking at Ghost in his prison uniform because he's already been convicted. And now he's being interviewed by this new prosecutor from the Eastern District saying, your wife is dying. And he was like, so my wife's still going to be dead. I get out, but I'm still a rat. So I thought they were going to have him befriend, but we see that they meet up in the hallway with Angela and Joseph and uh, Joseph Proctor knows him too. Some kind of way he ends up warming his way onto um, the case. He comes in and tells Sykes and uh, Sandoval and Angela, y'all asses ain't going to get this case because I'm going to do it. And they were like, yeah, you just wherever uh, damn cameras are. He decides to use Angela to interview her. Uh, we remember the stop that Greg did stalking. Um, we're reminded of the stop that Greg did of Ghost. Angela goes, well, it was off the books. Well, then this new prosecutor was like, but I'm going to need for you to give me everything you can, a timeline on everything, and who's to say what James St. Patrick has to say is even true. And I remember, I think even Sykes was like, or Sandoval or somebody said when they were in this room together about, do you really think that he uh, killed him? Because like, this is his first time ever murdering anybody. Just a brief pause. Let's have a moment for my boo on this show. I love me some Julio. That is one fine Latino man. Okay, he can get this. Okay. But he comes in on Dre's club because Dre like, well, uh, James left me in charge and Julio's like, well, Tommy's in charge now. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, you're going to hire old girl. And I'm like, basically she just going to be spying on your ass. He was talking about, can she mix a drink? He said, just like somebody taught you, she can learn too. Okay. Everyone's concerned about the fact that ghost is locked up, but like Tommy said, Hey, helping ghost helps everybody. Cause you know, let's be real ghost James. He's the brains of the operation. Tommy's smart. But he's not like that, I'm a Brooks brother, Wall Street, uh, making deals type of dude. You know, he that street dude, okay? He, you know, he don't know. Dre was offended by the fact that Julio got put in charge. He was like, why not me? And I was like, first of all, because everybody knows you're lying. You still have not come clean about who Slim really is. If you come clean about that, you might be able to move up the food chain. But I seriously doubt that because you've lied the entire time. So you've kind of screwed yourself out of any legitimacy. So good luck with that. During the court session, you know, they're, they're doing their arguments about bail and, and why it is that James St. Patrick. And at first, the judge seemed like she was really, really going to go for this bail because she was like, well, what about an ankle monitor? That seems like a medium, right? She's like, he has ties to the community. He's a businessman. You know, I mean, but he, he has a means of a lot of money. And so next thing you know, 
Proctor starts talking about meaning what that he's an African American man and oh he's black or whatever. And I think that's when that changed the judge's mind when you mentioned African American because you know they love us being on the plantation known as the prison industrial complex. Okay, let me stop. Either way, James. Oh, oh Jesus! She said no bail, Lord. I was like, oh, this too much, Jesus. Oh Lord. James going to be in prison with Charlie Murphy up his ass all the time. Oh, no. Mm -mm, I can't do this. Fix it, Jesus. Um, James comes to Angela and asks her, you know, do you really think I did this? And she was like, I know you did it. I was like, oh, I can't stand your smug ass. Charlie Murphy and his homeboy talking about, we have a prisoner resisting. He was like, I'm not even resisting. And that's what pissed me the fuck off right then and there. I'm like, you have people that get arrested for bogus ass charges and have to suffer the consequences of the person that actually did it. Because you are not guilty until proven otherwise. So how are you going to beat him? Mur I mean, I'm curious to see what he going to look like after this beating he just took. That was just uncalled for. So we'll see what next week brings. I liked what Courtney Kemp had to say about the episode that she did. She was saying that she gave us the title, When I Get Out, to lead us to believe he was going to get out. In addition, they wanted him charged with something that we, the audience, all know that he didn't do so that James St. Patrick would have the mindset of, uh, you know, being an innocent man and just truly believing he's going to get out. I really enjoyed this episode. I hope someone finds out soon who Kanan really is. Okay, Tariq is dumb as hell, as I said earlier. Your mama and have told you to stay the hell away from Kanan. Drayden told Kanan to stay the hell away from Tariq. Kanan hard-headed, he just steady poking the bear. Because see, Tasha and Tommy, I get the sense that they kind of know that Kanan is still alive, but they just can't put their finger on it. And I have a sneaking suspicion that in some ways, Tommy may even believe that Slim is in fact Kanan. I don't know. This is just a theory because you can tell when you see Tommy, his brain is always working when he's talking to Dre. Uh, but Tariq is answering text messages once again from Kanan. When Tasha walked into the Toss department, that's another thing I don't understand. Um, I've never seen it, uh, you know, no more than on TV. But when you go to serve a warrant, do you really have to tear up people's house like that? I mean, because the suspect is not guilty as far as we know. And I'm like, who's going to pay for the damage? I'm like, she has to now pay for a cleaning service or do whatever. Here's some questions I have. Where is Angie? You know, Debbie Morgan. Where is she? She hasn't been on the episode. Where's the third child that they have? We ain't seen the baby. She's about walking and talking now, ain't she? Comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this season four premiere of Power on Stars. I'm so excited. I love this show. Thumbs it up. Let's have a dialogue down below in the comment section about what you thought about this episode. And please be sure to subscribe and be sure to share. Again, thank you guys for joining. You've been all that. And I have been Miss Sophia the Diva.